Hello YouTube, my name is Hans and welcome to my channel and to this episode of Darktable Insights. This will be an introduction to Darktable, a very sophisticated free tool for organizing and editing your photos. Today I'm going to give you an overview of how this app works and what it can do for you. In later episodes I will go in further detail about uh, how to actually use it. So. Without further ado, let's dive right in. So, here we are in Darktable. And uh, this is quite empty at the moment, because I haven't imported any photos yet. But here you can see on the left side are different things we can do to import and organize our images and get information about them and so on. In the middle is the image area where you will see the imported images and then on the right there are different tools that we can use on the images. Now this is as you see the light table mode which is like a virtual light table where you lay out your images to look at them, select them, throw out the bad ones and select the good ones and select the ones you want to uh, edit. Here's the dark room, we'll come back to that afterwards. That's where you edit your images and there are also some other areas in this app. Well, we'll take and go go ahead and import some images. Go to import and folder. Since I have a folder that contains some images I want to import, I'll just navigate to that folder. This is the one, and hit open, and there we are. So now you can see. Let's say we want to look at some image information about the images. We can open this module and we can hover the mouse over the images and we see that the uh, data changes. And see this one was taken with an aperture of f14, exposure 15 seconds, 10 millimeter focal length and so on. Okay, so if we now take this image and we go into darkroom to edit it, we can either select image and click on darkroom here or we can double click the image directly. I'll do that and it opens up in darkroom. Now you can see on your left there's a thumbnail of the image and there are different modules down here that we'll come back to some other time. The important stuff happens to the right. Here we have the histogram at the top. I don't like this way to view the histogram so I click on this little curve here to make it linear. That's better for me to read at least. And then we have all the tools down here. They're uh, organized in groups. Like the first group here is the tools that are currently active. You can see that by default some of the modules are active. Like white balance and orientation if it's if it's uh, landscape or portrait mode, if it's wrong, we can go in here and rotate it like that. And there are also some others like sharpening and color profiles. Next one is your favorites. This is by default empty, so uh, you just add your favorite tools here so you have, have ready access to them at any time. Next one is a basic group, 
with some uh, basic tools like uh, white balance, highlight reconstruction, dim mosaicing, orientation. Well, next one is tools that has to do with tone. That's like levels and curves and we have color. There also is a correction group, sharpening, lens correction, and also have denoising and other tools in here. And the last one is an effects group with vignetting, grain, graduated density filters and so on. And if these tools aren't enough, there are many more to choose from. Go down here on more modules. And you have a long, long, long list. I don't expect you to, to use any, every one of them. Cause but there are tools for every taste. What you do is just click on them. You can see here some of them are highlight highlighted in lighter gray. Those are the ones that are active in some, in some of the groups. So we have constant contrast, brightness and saturation. In one group we have crop and rotate, demo saking. So what we can do is, for example, denoise profiled. Just click on it. And the uh, dark table automatically changes to the uh, correction group, which is where denoise is situated. And now I have it there, and we can also go to uh, the favorites group. We can click one more, once more on it. This star appears, and it also appears in the favorites group. So now we take some other uh, necessary modules and put in the in the uh, favorites. Let's take exposure. We also need white balance in there. And I want to have the tone curve. That is there. Okay, that's good for now. So now we can start working with this. This image has a blue cast to it because it was taken with the Lee Big Stopper, which gives, which gives a blue cast. So we open up the white balance module and uh, drag the temperature slider to the right. To Oops, warm the image up. And if we wanted to, we don't need to here, but we could take the exposure slightly down. And we can manipulate the tone curve. We'll come back to all of these in future episodes. This is just examples of what we can do really quickly close that one again, more modules. Down at the bottom we have a uh, film strip with all our imported images. So we can just double click on an image then we can edit this one. It needs a bit more contrast I think. It also needs a bit more saturation. That's nice. Okay, now we have done a bit to, to a couple of images. So it's time to go back to light table. Then we can choose control click to choose two images. The two we did something with, then you can export them. You can choose where to export. Choose your folder here. Just say the same folder. Select the those put and then export. So I guess that was it for today. If you would like to 
learn more about Darktable, then please subscribe and come back to see me next week. Bye for now. Thank <music> you.